Good Jesus, he is Lord and he is the Almighty. You know the bad part of it is sometimes we have this wonderful, powerful Jesus in us and for some reason we stop. No movement, no joy in ministry, in life, in everything. God wants you to restore your movement forward. He wants you to restore the movement forward of your ministry, of your life, of your health. This is Pastor Henry coming to you from the Victory Church here in Kiev, Ukraine. And today we have a wonderful, wonderful program because you are going to hear the Word of God on how to move forward, restart. You need to retune yourself. You need to, to make yourself start again, come back to the original movement forward. God wants you moving forward. Let's take a listen to this wonderful message. I want to talk to you today on the subject, Renew Your Progress. Many people have stopped on their way. And not only in life, but in the area of their health, in their family, in their job and business, and in their ministry. But God wants your progress to be restored and for you to begin to move forward. Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 2. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever first stepped in after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, He who may be well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had a multitude being in that place. It's amazing that he was sick for 38 years. He was healed, and he didn't even know Jesus. He didn't know him. First of all, it says something about the mercy of God. You are not required to become a theology professor to get your miracle from God. Moreover, I can tell you, it's not absolutely necessary to be a believer to receive a miracle from God. But having received a miracle from God, it's better to be a believer. Afterwards, otherwise you may lose your miracle. Here's the main question. This man was lying there near the pool, and he was sick for 38 years. But there was a different beginning. Many years ago, he probably found out that he was sick. The Bible doesn't say that he was born sick. But it says that he was ill for a long time. Let's assume he got sick when he was 10 or 15. We don't know exactly. But then he heard that there is a pool in Jerusalem called Bethesda. It doesn't say that he is from Jerusalem. Most probably, he arrived to Jerusalem from another area with the purpose of receiving 
his healing miracle when the angel of the Lord would come to stir up the water. Why did he go to Jerusalem? Why did he go to Bethesda Pool? It is because he didn't want to be ill for the rest of his life. Number two, he had an aspiration. And that's why he moved from his location to Jerusalem. He had an inner drive for freedom. He had an inner drive. Please note that these two qualities are those qualities which are required for a person to move forward constantly. Bad circumstances will come. Tragedies may come. Our life is not insured from difficulties and tragedies. They will come. But they are not bound to stop you. I've heard about one person who received Jesus. He was 43 years old. He wasn't able to read or write. He became a believer when he was 43. When he repented, then he thought, I don't know how to read. But what old lady told him, that's the will of God for you. As you receive Jesus, serve him just as you are. So he continued to serve God for five more years like that. He was 48 years old when he met another person who told him, stop. That's not the will of God for you. Why? Because you are illiterate. So he went to school when he was 48. It was not a regular school, but a school for adults. He graduated university. Before he retired, he launched his own business. At the same time, he became a professor of the university, and he had so many achievements that when he died, being an old man, he had so much money that he established a fund to help illiterate adults. Because he understood that it appears that I need not always accept my current state. But this paralyzed man came to the Bethesda pool because he heard that there is a solution. And it says in verse 7, The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. This man was there probably for 38 years. This is what I call being stuck in that place. Why did he come to Jerusalem? Because he didn't just accept his sickness. He didn't agree to stay an invalid. He didn't agree. He wanted to move forward. He made a decision to come to Jerusalem. I'll get there. I'll get into the water. I'll be watching. I'll not be sleeping. He had his plans and ideas. When the angel will come, I will jump into the water before anyone else. I'll rise up and continue my life. But when he finally came, one time he failed. Then he failed a second time. He failed a third time. He became a veteran of failure. A veteran of defeat. This is the most dangerous state of life. What happens when a person is in such a condition? Number one, he finds other people in the same state and they begin to comfort each other. If you constantly have permanent fellowship with people who have the same problem that you have, then you are part of a bad circle. For they will never inspire you to come out of such a state. Number two. There is a concept of self-pity, self-pity or self-regret is a group of people who inspire each other 
saying, do you pray about your case? Yes, I pray once a month. Well, it's not bad because some people in church don't pray at all. Thus, you comfort each other for having a prayerless life. The comfort zone, whether spiritual comfort or any other comfort, hinders you to find the way out and come into something new. After 38 le years, it becomes uncomfortable to sit near Bethesda Pool because it is a place of comfort. I used to be there. But discomfort will help you to establish yourself in life. I can't hear you. Saul. Yes. Where are you going? I'm going to persecute Christians. Listen. Don't you want to become an apostle? He would surely refuse. But how he was persuaded was a severe discomfort. He met Jesus. The light shone around him from heaven. He fell down to the ground, became blind. He heard a voice. He was troubled. What should I do? As a result, he became a real apostle. The Bible says in John chapters 5, verses 6, 7, and 8, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been there in a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? Do you know that the greatest comfort is that God knows my long-lasting suffering. Have you ever suffered in your life? Do you know there are some kinds of suffering that you don't want to tell anybody? But here's what brings me joy. Jesus, he doesn't need to read a newspaper. He doesn't need any information from anyone. He just looked at him and knew God knows what problems you have, what you struggle with, what mental agony you have, what tears you apart, what difficulties you face. He knows it. But he not only knows, he doesn't want to blame you for those troubles. But he knows about it, and he also wants to help you how to bring you out of your troubles, how to lift you up, and how to restore you completely. It appears that he was lying there for 38 years. And Jesus finds out that he's lying there. And I would think that Jesus would come up and say, don't bother yourself. It doesn't depend on you, buddy. Just take your bed and walk. But please note that when Jesus found out about it, he didn't say at once, take your bed and walk. Because it appears that something depends on that person. Jesus asked a question. Do you want to be made well? Please note. He yes. Do you want to be made well? Yes. Do you want to have improvements in your life? Yes. If you'll say yes, but I've already been suffering for 38 years. I need some human to help me, but no one wants to help me. You know, when you find excuses for your limitations, thus you justify the reasons for limitations to your life. But do you want to be made well? What do you want to have today? God is asking you. Maybe you want to have a renewal. Maybe you want some changes. What area do you want to be improved? You name it. And the power of God will move in that direction. And angels of the Lord will start working with you. They will become involved in your circumstances. But it's you who is supposed to to direct it all. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately, the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. 
What do we see? Number one, the Word of God is living. Say with me, the Word of God is living. The key to renew your advance is to return to the Word of God. Number one, return to those revelations that God unveiled to you a long time ago. There is progress in those revelations. You forgot them, but that is why you have no progress anymore. Return back to those promises, to those revelations. Renew those passages from the Holy Scripture that were so alive to you. If you'll take the Word of God, if your life leaked away, you don't live the full life anymore. Then close your door, take your Bible, and start to read and to meditate on the Word of God. After all, it says in John 8, 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When the Word of God comes, the power of God is always accompanying the Word of God. Please note, Jesus said, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And the power of God worked at once, and the person got healed at that very moment. God wants you to agree and start acting. What will you ask God and what will you agree to? Action is required. Your action is required. Open new horizons and start to advance and renew your progress. Whenever you are moving forward, you are alive. If you want to keep life, keep moving. Once you stop, it's very hard to restart. The best way to restart sometimes, find somebody who is already moving. Hook yourself up with him and he will help you restart. And one of the things that happens is the Holy Spirit will touch you and help you in your restart. Uh, I want you to watch these testimonies of people whose lives were touched by God. He gave them a restart. Somebody was sick, somebody was dying, and God gave them a restart. At the end of this program, I will pray a prayer, and the power of God will touch you for a restart. In Jesus' name. This man was paralyzed for five months. And this is your wife. And this is what you used to walk. Okay, let's walk with me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mumbai, let's say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pastor, this lady from 12 years old, she was demon possessed because uh -huh. somebody talked witchcraft on her and she was wild. She couldn't walk normally. Now she is normal and she and is. And who is this? This is to her be, dad. Be, you are the father? To be Pita. Father, father. His father. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what was wrong with your daughter? <laughs> Since 12 years, she was possessed of a demonic power. She was possessed. They used to think that they only just stomach pain, nothing else, nothing else, but they came to know that they became violent. Yeah, violent. What happened today? As you prayed, as you prayed, uh -huh. she started, started manifesting. She electric shock. Uh, just and like the the electric current was moving in her body. She, she started, her body. started and manifesting. And now, and now she's feeling uh, 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 light, uh, very light. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, stomach pain is not there. But heaviness in her stomach is there. Thank you, Jesus. She used to feel like somebody is pinching her. Thank you, Jesus. Can we do For quickly? six months, this lady couldn't walk. Her husband brought her here. Husband, and now come, she please. she can walk by herself. 
और छह महीने से ये बहन चल नहीं पाती थी इनके पति इनको लेकर आए हैं यू वर्क ऑन योर ओन आप अपने आप से चल नहीं पाती थी चार महीने से चल नहीं पा रही थी So how did she come tonight? Aaj aaj char aaj ki raat wo kaise aayi? Hamai pakad ke leke aaya tha abhi kuch chal raha hai. He hold him and he brought her. You were you brought here? Yeah. Now I want you to walk. Abhi aap chalo. This is the woman who was brought who could not walk on her own. Ye wo bahan hai jiska pati inko pakad ke laaya tha yahan par. Can you run? Ye chal nahi pati thi. Aap daud ke dikhao. Aap daud ke dikhao. Can you run? Daudo. Okay. Can you come back? Fir se fir se wapas aao idhar. Can you run faster? Fast tez daudo. Hallelujah Hallelujah Let's say hallelujah Hai hallelujah kahe Well God bless you Prabhu aapko aashish de God bless you What happened Prabhu here Prabhu kisto thi ho kya hua Yesterday when you were preaching and told to call your family member on the phone when you prayed yes. he was laying in the bed he couldn't walk Okay And that time he was healed and now he is here Wow look at this man Ab aap is vyakti ko dekhe I want you to hear this story Hum chahte hain ki kahani aap sune Last night पिछली रात पीपल टू कॉल देयर रिलेटिव तो मैंने लोगों से कहा था कि आपके सगे संबंधी जो बिछाने पर है आप उनको फोन करो एंड ही वाज एट होम और ये भाई कल घर पे थे ही वाज सिक ये बीमार थे एंड समबडी कॉल्ड हिम और किसी ने इनके जो है इनको फोन किया ही हेड द प्रेयर और इन्होंने प्रार्थना सुनी एंड गॉड हील्ड हिम और परमेश्वर ने इन्हें चंगाई दी एंड हियर ही इज अब ये यहां पर है लेट्स शाउट हालेलुया हालेलुया God bless you Prabhu aap ko aashish de So what was your sickness Aapki bimari kya thi Mere ko foot drop tha aur kamar slip mein dard hai He was not be I mean he was having a pain in her spinal spinal uh, cord cord okay Mai uthta nahi jaldi Won't be able to you know uh, he was stand. able to stand yeah, So now kal mere la bhai ka ladki ne idhar se phone kiya mere ko Brother's ki... daughter was here yesterday and she called him on the phone okay and he heard the prayer uh, uh, from here And now he is okay. Uh, okay. Can you walk? Abhi aap chal ke dikha. Praise God. Can you walk back? Phir se wapas aao idhar se chalo. Well, let's shout for joy. Oh, God. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, let's be here. It's always refreshing when you see miracles. I can never look at a miracle and not smile and be happy because every miracle is a confirmation the word of god is true and god is powerful and he can intervene in all the issues and areas that con that are connected to humanity and if he does a miracle with one person he will do a miracle with you so every one of these miracles that you just watched is a confirmation God can do a miracle for you and this is the moment that we have been waiting for but before i pray for your miracle for a restart i want to pray in case you don't know jesus yet i want you to be reconciled to god receive the forgiveness of sins say with me heavenly father i repent i am a sinner wash me clean in the blood of Jesus make me a new person in Jesus name amen praise the lord if you pray that prayer sincerely you are saved you are a child of god now i want to pray for you for two things number one for healing number two for a restart i don't know what happened to you where did you stop but god is going to restart everything and when god does it nothing can stop it unless you stop it by stopping believing now don't stop believing continue to believe in trusting in god because he likes it and he enjoys it when you believe him now i want to pray for you lay your hands wherever you're sick or lay your hands on your heart if you need a restart of movement heavenly father i thank you that there is nothing impossible with you therefore in the name of jesus i command every sickness and disease go be removed now in the name of jesus by the power of the blood of jesus 
in the name of Jesus, I command sickness and disease to go now in the name of Jesus. And Heavenly Father, I pray, let the power of the Holy Spirit fall upon your people with mighty power, rejuvenating, bringing back to life, restoring movement, restoring what has been lost in the name of Jesus. Let the momentum come back and the glory of God be released once again, more than ever before, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord. What a wonderful Savior that we serve. Jesus is so good. I mean, when I talk about Jesus, every cell in my body vibrates because he's so alive and I'm full of his life. Remember, he loves you. Keep holding on to Jesus and to his word. Feel free to write us a letter anytime. Send us an email or whatever. And we are ready to pray for you, bless you. Tell us about the miracles that God has done. We want to rejoice together with you. Remember, Jesus is Lord.